Good day, listeners and students. The topic before me today is trigonometry, and trigonometry means measurement of triangles. But it's a wide aspect, and we have to limit ourselves to some objective. So it means student will be able to number one state whether a triangle is right angled or not. Number two, state the ratio of the major trigonometric function. Three, apply the trigonometric functions in solving right angle triangles and related problems. Four, should be able to establish relationship between trigonometric functions. So, how do we determine whether a triangle is right angled or not? We can, the simple answer to that is through Pythagoras theorem. What does Pythagoras theorem state? It states that the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares of the two uh, other side. So, how do we get that? In a triangle, the larger side is called the hypotenuse, and the two other sides, we have opposite and adjacent. So, from the Pythagoras term I stated the other time, it means hypotenuse square equals opposite square plus adjacent square. So, I may have some questions here, right? The size of triangle are given as 3, 4, and 5 centimeters. Determine whether a triangle is right angled. So what do we do? The largest of the TV side is 5. 5 square, which is 25. Is it the same thing as the sum of the squares of the other two? The other two are 3 and 4. So TV square will give us 9. 4 square will give us what? 16. If you add them together, you see that it's also the same thing as 25. So TV 4, 5 is a such a triangle is what a right angle triangle we may have another question determine whether a triangle of side 5 12 and 13 centimeters is also what a right angle triangle you follow the same process 13 is the largest 13 square is what 169 then 12 square is 144 when you add it to 5 squares it will give us 169 5 square is 25 so when you add it, it will give us 169. So it means a triangle of 5, 12, and 13 is also what a right angled triangle. So the next question we need to ask ourselves is that what are the major trig functions and what are their ratios? For the purpose of this lesson, uh, the, we are going to limit ourselves to three major trig functions. Those are sine, cosine, and tangent. And we can easily remember that through our so cartoa, the mnemonics. So, but before I go straight into the Sokatoa, we need to understand uh, which one is our hypotenuse, which one is our opposite, and which one is our adjacent. From my last uh, discussion, from uh, what I explained earlier, hypotenuse is the larger side. So, we just need to clarify the opposite and adjacent. In every triangle, right angle triangle, before you can be asked to solve, you must be given minimum of three parameters meaning two additional parameters to include uh, that of the right angle. So the two other parameters could be opposite uh, the side and one of, uh, uh, one of the angles. So if you are given an angle, theta, so the side that is opposite to that angle would be what's called opposite, and the other side would be called adjacent. So from there, I can now pick my so katoa. The S O H in the so S means sign and the O is what opposite H is hypotenuse. So meaning by sign of an angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of an angle ka will be equal to what adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent of an angle that's toi will be equal to what opposite over adjacent. So that is uh, the meaning of our Sokatoa. So, the next is how do we evaluate sine of an angle, cosine of an angle, and tangent of an angle. So, we can do that using our four-figure table or calculator. Uh, calculator is easily done. Just press sine or so-so. But for four-figure table, we need to check our four-figure table and see how we can also what. When you see your four figure table, you can easily identify okay, how you can go about it. You get sign of different angles from 0 to 89 from your four figure table. So, in our next segment, we want to look at how do we apply 
uh, district function in solving question. So thank you as we meet in the next uh, section. Yes, you are welcome back to the second second segment. Uh, here we want to see how we can apply the concept of trig functions in solving triangles and related problems. So in solving triangles, right angle triangles, we have the following steps. We need to follow uh, majorly three steps. But before even the three steps, we need to name our size, the size of the triangle. We name the triangle, which one is the hypotenuse, which one is the opposite, and which one. Based on my last explanation, I've told us the given angle, you will first identify it, or the needed angle. So the side that is opposite to it is called the opposite. So label your triangle. Have you label your triangle, then you follow the three steps. The three steps are the first thing you write out your mnemonics. So Katoa, write it uh, at the top of your paper. Then the next thing is what? Identify the unknown parameter. The one you are looking for. Sometimes it could be the side that you are looking for. It could be the angle. Then number three is what? Identify the given parameter. Which one have you been given? So it means you are looking for which one have you been given? Which one is unknown? So let's see how we can apply. Based on if you apply those three steps, you should be able to find your triangles. We have a question here. Say solve this triangle. In the triangle, you have been given the hypotenuse size to be x centimeter, x, that's the unknown. Then the opposite to the angle is what, 5. And you have been given angle 30 degree. So what do we do? Write out, first step, write out, since we have labeled our triangle, write out the mnemonics. So, katoa. Then from there, what is, what have been given? We have been given the opposite and we are looking for the hypotenuse. So where do we have HO or OH together? That is so. So hence, our sine 30 degree, because sine of an angle is opposite of hypotenuse. So the opposite here is five, the hypotenuse is X. So meaning sine 30 equals five over X. So what is sine 30? Use your calculator or four figure table. So we have 0 0.5 is equals to five over X. So if you cross multiply, x is equal to 10 centimeter another question is here yeah, this is solve we have um, a triangle angle 30 degree given and the hypotenuse the larger side is given as 8 centimeter and the adjacent is given as x so having named or labeled the triangle you also uh, write out your mnemonic so katoa then step two is that what is that that we have not been given we are looking for the unknown that is x there and that is the adjacent side. So note it A. And what have we been given? H as 8 centimeter. So meaning AH or HA. And that is for K. So it means we are using cosine. Cos of the angle given. That is cos of 30. It's equals to adjacent over hypotenuse. What is our adjacent here? X. And hypotenuse is what? 8. So find the value of cos 30 from a four figure table or calculator. And you cross multiply. So we see that our x is equal to 6.928. And another question here, which you can go and look at, uh, you can write down. We have a 5, we have been given the size 5 and 7, and we want to find the theta. So we see the same thing. Here, opposite and adjacent have been given, so it means 2. So as a result, we say tan theta equals 5 over 7. 5 over 7 is 0 0.7143. From your calculator, you can press uh, uh, tan inverse of 0 0.7143. You have that as what? 35.54. Another related question that we can use it to solve is uh, in a question like this. It said, given that sine x is tv over 5 and x is between 0 and 90 degrees, find the value of 5 cos x minus 4 tan x. So, to do that, what we just need to do is that we need to draw your uh, right angle triangle and we have been given sign. Sign is opposite over hypotenuse. So put your opposite there, TV, and put your hypotenuse there, 5. So using your uh, Pythagoras theorem, you can find the adjacent side. So the adjacent side from here will be equal to what? 4, using our Pythagoras theorem. So 
it means that what our cos x is what 4 over 5 and tan x is what uh, 3 over 4 if you substitute that we have 5 into bracket 4 over 5 minus 4 into bracket 3 over 4 and that will give us what 4 minus 3 which is 1 so in the next segment we are going to continue thank you you yeah, are welcome back let me take one more question from um, the last uh, aspect that we explained so i have a question here it said if tan x equals tv over 4 and x is between 0 and 90 degree then evaluate cos x over 2 sin x so how do we do that you also draw your right angle triangle tan that has been given is opposite over adjacent so when you draw it you put your opposite to be 3 and your adjacent to be 4 so using our Pythagoras theorem, we find the hypotenuse. If you use Pythagoras theorem, it means our hypotenuse will be equals to 5. So having done that, then we can now find the value of cos x as they have asked us. So cos x will be equals to adjacent over hypotenuse. Our adjacent there is 4 over 5. So then sine x will be equals to opposite over hypotenuse opposite there is tv over 5 so can you now substitute it in that expression the expression given that we are supposed to find is cos x over 2 sin x so if i should do that cos x will give us 4 over 5 divided by 2 into bracket sin x will give us tv over 5 so that would be 4 over 5 divided by 6 over 5 if you change the division to multiplication it becomes 4 over 5 times 5 over 6 so we have it as 4 over 6 and that is 2 over 3 so the answer to that is 2 over 3 so the next aspect we quickly move to is how do we establish relationship between uh, the trig functions especially sine and cosine we have realized that there are some sine of angles that are equal to certain cos of angles so and then i will just bring out some of the special angles so that we can from there we can establish relationship and generalize so i can see that sine zero is same thing as cos 90 degree which will give us 0 0.000 sine 30 is same thing as cos 60 degree which will give us 0 0.500 sine 45 is same thing as cos 45 which is equal to 0 0.7071 sine 60 is same thing as cos 60 which is 0 0.8660 so from there, I can see that before sine and cosine can be equal, if you look at this uh, very well, you realize that those angles, they add up to give us 90 degrees. So 0 and 90 give us 90, 30 and 60 give us 90, 45 and 45 give us 90, 60 and 30. So we can generalize that sine alpha will be equal to cos alpha, provided that what alpha and beta add up to give us 90. So let's see how we can use that to solve some questions. I have sin, solve sine x equals to cos 25. So since they are equal here, sine and cosine, so it means the angles must be complementary. They must add up to give us 90 degrees. So as a result, I will just say x plus 25 equals to 90. From there, x will be equals to 90 minus 25, which is 65. Number two question it says sine x plus 10 equals cos x minus 20. For them to be equal again, I need to add the two angles together to add to give us 90 degrees. So what do I do? X plus 10 plus x minus 20 will give me 90 degrees. If I need to if I solve that, I have two x is equal to 100, and my x will give me 50. So we can do the same thing in the question sine tvx equals cos 2x. So just add tvx and 2x together that will give us 5x it must be equal to 90 from there x is equal to 18. it can also be applied in this question simplify sine 25 over cos 65 plus cos 5 over sine 85 without the use of calculator so what do we just check check whether the numerator and denominator are the same sine 25 and cos 65 and before they can be the same it means the angles must add up to give you 90 if you check you realize that it will give you likewise for the other one too so it means it will give us 1 plus 1 equals to 2 so that is uh, where we are going to end but before we go let me quickly give us some assignment to uh, work on 
we have uh, question one given that sine y equals to 8 over 17 find the value of tan y over 1 plus 2 tan l y y then the second question if tan x equals 4 over 3 and x is between 0 and 90 degrees find the value of sine x minus cos x so thank you for listening mm -hmm.